So this is one of our favorite dinner meals. This is kind of a spinoff of well, how my sister cooks a meatloaf. My sister cooks her meatloaf in a Dutch oven in a ring. We're gonna take a couple pounds of hamburger and uh, we're gonna mix some spices and some seasonings and everything in there. And we're gonna put that hamburger inside that, that lodge Dutch oven, the big one, the 14, and then you put all your vegetables in the middle. So right now I'm just chopping up some jalapenos real fine, real small, so Shiner can start mixing them in here with this hamburger. So what we got here is four pounds of hamburger, one packet of onion soup mix, and four jalapenos. I'm just gonna mix it all in real good. And then we're gonna form the ring around the outside, leaving that center open for all of our other veggies to cook with it. So I'm trying to pack this meat ring as evenly as possible, because like Crash has talked about, you want everything as even as possible, because you're gonna get hot spots and cold spots, and you, you don't want that. You want everything to be cooking through real nice and even. All right, man. Look at that right there. So that's the perfect place to hold them mushrooms and that onions after that bakes down in there like that. And then you put that Worcestershire sauce in there. You got all the seasons in that meat. And let that thing slow bake. Pair that up with some mashed potatoes. And buddy, I'm telling you, you got yourself one for the books. One for the books. All it's right, like, friend of mine. It looks like a small area for all that stuff, but it's gonna cook down. Now, like Shiner was saying, this looks like a lot. And it is. But all this stuff's gonna cook down and it's gonna be about half that size by the time we go to eat it. It's just gonna be kind of filled up right there in the middle and just baking and soaking in those juices. So we're gonna put some Worcestershire sauce in there. That's a winner here, boy. Grab some of this. This right here is 12 ounces. You go, man, that's a lot of sauce. And I say, yeah, buddy, that's a lot of sauce. All right, so we got our coals ready to go. We got our meat ring in this dude. I got nine coals on the bottom for this guy. Again, you can never be too picky when it comes to coal location. And then we're going to put 18 on the top. So nine on the bottom, 18 on the top. Do some quick math, see what I'm saying? 30% of your coals on the bottom. We got our potatoes boiling and our coals from our fire pit. Sliced them all up. There's probably a dozen potatoes in there. We want them as soft as we possibly can get because we're gonna manually have to put those through a potato ricer, which is really, really slick. These probably have another five, 10 more minutes and we'll be ready to start mashing up some potatoes. So we got rocket science here. We've got our gravy. One cup of water, one packet of brown gravy. We're gonna put our cup of water in. Gonna take our packet of gravy here. Gonna slowly dump that in while we mix it up. We're just gonna let this gravy cook till it starts boiling. Remove it from the heat and it'll thicken pond standing. And we'll pour that right over our mashed potatoes. It shouldn't take long to start boiling with this heat. Woo, look at that right there. So we're gonna take these potatoes out, put them in a bowl. We get some butter, get some milk. Now no one said we were out here being healthy. Jam that down in there, that little stick of butter. You wanna run that bad dude? I'll do that for you, bud. So check this rig out. This guy is what they call a potato ricer. And it just makes quick work of just smashing those potatoes through there. Just keep loading her up, packing her in, running it through, and that's just making everything essentially granular, same size, so we can go back through with a whisk. Oh yeah, and just cream it up. This thing is an awesome little contraption. All right, that's, that's our last load there, bud. All right, brother. So, whiskey's up. You want to pour me in a little bit of milk? There's some milk right there. I got a stick of butter in here. Got about a dozen potatoes. You just keep working them potatoes. And before you know it, you're gonna have a 
pile of potatoes fit for a Thanksgiving dinner. How about some salt and pepper? We got some salt and pepper? Yes, sir. Now the cool thing about cast iron is cast iron holds its heat. So you can get done whisking all this up, clean up your edges, stick your lid back on, and set it off to the side and wait for your other meal to be completed. And when we get into these potatoes, they'll be perfect. We got the gravy over here right now. It's starting to thicken up and it's cooling down. So we're gonna have brown gravy, mashed potatoes, a meat ring, and mushrooms and onions. So that meat ring, what we did was we just let all those coals bake down. Pulled it off to the side, kind of let it sit for a little bit and, and just kind of slow bake in its own heat with the cast iron itself. Got the potatoes made and then we scooped a shovel full of coals out and just put them on top of this meat ring. Just kind of bring it back up to temperature so it's good and hot. This thing's probably been cooking for, I'd say probably close to about 50 minutes to an hour now. And it's ready to go. She's juicy. She's ready to eat. So we're gonna take this thing to the table, cut it up, throw her out. All right, so this took about an hour to bake, hour and 25 if you include prep time. We used four pounds of hamburger, sliced up four jalapenos, one pack of onion soup mix. Take the jalapenos and the onion soup mix and just mash it all into that hamburger just like you would a meatloaf. Make your ring right inside that Dutch oven. We cut up two massive onions and had two packs of portobello mushrooms. Dumped a, an entire bottle of Worcestershire sauce in there. Dumped it all in there, baked it for an hour. We're ready to eat. That cast iron skillet is probably close to five or 600 degrees right now. So we just went ahead and pulled it off. It's gonna sit here for a couple more minutes toast the bottom of that bread, the top, the cheese is already melted on the top, just some Texas toast. Goes good with, with the meat and the veggies and the mashed potatoes and the gravy and get you a big piece of toast, sop it all up with. It's just a good way to end your day. So we're about ready to eat here. About if I had to guess right now in the high 20s, low 30s. Perfect, perfect. Just heard the coyotes howling. Down here in timber. We got us mashed potatoes, gravy, meat, onions, mushrooms, Texas toast. That right there is a meal that will put you to bed. And you can totally do it. All you gotta do is just try it. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>